All right, it's go time. We have to do our long-awaited split charge relay system, which means we're gonna have an extra battery. We don't have solar power yet. First thing we're doing, we got this crate for our second battery. It's called a leisure battery. So you want a leisure battery for when you're camping at night and you don't have any power on, your vehicle's turned off. You still need to run your fans, you still need to run your lights, you still need to run uh, the refrigerator, maybe an induction cooker. The second battery, this leisure battery, is what's gonna power you at night. So we got this little kit, it's called the Split Charge Relay Kit. This is a smart isolator. What this is gonna do is this is gonna be between your van's main battery and your leisure battery. So this acts in the middle. It's kind of like a cut off switch and a cut on switch because when your car is driving, as long as you have this in between and your car is going over 13.3 volts, it'll start charging this battery, which is what you want. But when you go to park at night, when your battery goes under 12.8 volts, it says here, um, this switch will cut off any connection between your leisure battery and your main car battery. Why is that important? Because when you're at night, after you've charged this during the day when you drove, it only takes about a half hour, they say. And then, while driving, uh, the vehicle being on, and this battery will be fully charged. When the car is off at night, you don't want these two connected because if this battery drains, which a refrigerator or something like that, something heavy, could drain your battery pretty fast. So if this battery drains and you didn't have this isolator, what's gonna happen is your refrigerator or whatever you're using is gonna pull energy from your main battery. And that's bad because you can wake up in the morning and this could be drained or it could be drained enough that it wouldn't turn the vehicle on. Oh no! So that's why you want one of these. This allows the connection while you're driving, while, this, while the engine is on, but at night, it, it cuts off the connection as soon as the voltage goes down. So the first thing we have to do, Miriam, is we have to drill a hole between somewhere where we can run our positive wire. We need to connect the positive wire to the positive terminal of the vehicle battery. Okay, here goes nothing. Step number one, drilling the hole. the smallest file you've ever seen. <laughs> hey there. Goes in. Hey. So, any of you that didn't know, the Mitsubishi L300, the engine is underneath the driver and the passenger. So you have to lift up the seat. Okay, here's our battery. Uh, there's our terminal. Oh, here's where the wire comes in, okay. That seems to be a good spot. Accessible. All right, so we're gonna have to get this crimped on. Uh, we never got ourselves a crimper, but we'll see what we can use. Anyway, this is just to give you the concept. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Get yourself some real tools <laughs> that you're supposed to use for specific jobs. So, I'm just using a, a razor blade. Get this strip here. Get down to the bare wire. How am I gonna crimp this? How am I gonna crimp this? How am I gonna crimp this wire? Ow! All right, so this is what we call extreme DIY. So we're gonna try to crimp this on using a chisel. <laughs> but I wanna just tape it in place. It actually worked. It crimped it. I think that's enough. Okay, so it's next day. So I got this sealed. I just did it with a hair dryer. So these these little sealer things that come with the whole kit. It's really it's really cool. It works with the hair dryer. I thought I was gonna have to go get myself a lighter. So now what I'm gonna do is take the fuse box and I'm gonna bolt it right in, right into the wall here, or at the bottom of the beam here. It's because this is coming from the vehicle battery, right? Positive. Coming into that, another wire is gonna come out this side and go right into the crate where the leisure battery. So I want this fuse always accessible because if it blows, all I have to do is look, open it up. Uh, you know, when you're trying to problem solve, if something happens, it's good to have it right there available. I 
like this one here. Take this, somehow get it in. I got it. The reason why I'm sending it all the way out this way is because on the L300, you need to lift up these two seats, the, the driver's seat and this middle area where the crate is when you get to the engine. So I wanted this fuse out of the way so the seat could be lifted without even disturbing the wire or the fuse. And then how this wire is coming towards me in this passenger seat, as long as it clears over here, I'll just be able to turn the crate and put it on the passenger seat without even having to detach the wire, in theory. And then anybody could access the engine. That's why I'm doing it like this. Okay. Okay, we got the rest of our wires, uh, terminal parts hooked up here. Got my first hook up here into the isolator. Start battery, so that means the battery that's coming from the engine. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put this up here and down to the fuse. Before I screw this on, I have to get the other wire going also. Here we go. This one will be going to the leisure battery. So you see on here the one that says second battery. That's the one you want to hook it to. So get it off here. I did my final tightening here. I have to put the bottom cover back on. You want these sorts of screws. It's pointy but then flattened out. That has just little sharp points on either end of that point. They're kind of like triangular. And uh, that's what digs into the metal. So these are special metal screws. That's what you need to look for. It'll go right into the metal. Let's see. In. So now I'm going to hook this up to the fuse. Fuse is here. I'm hooking, so that's coming again. That's coming from the vehicle battery into the fuse, out of the fuse, into the sensor. It's kind of right where I wanted it. I was able to hook it up, do my final tightening. And it's closed, hopefully. Yep, there we go. There we have it. That's our fuse. So again, Vehicle, battery to the fuse. Fuse, woo, up to isolator. The other side that you want to connect to from the isolator to your leisure battery. Here we go. All right, so I just have to hook this up. Hopefully it goes right on the terminal. And uh, still don't like touching positive terminals without my rubber gloves. My hammer's got a rubber handle, so <laughs> I'll just kind of get this on where it needs to be. Final tightening. All right, I'm going to hook this up. See if we're in a uh, party mode, you know. What should do it for us. Okay, so with the ground wire that's coming from the isolator, I already crimped this on. And we'll put it all the way over here in the corner. I just sanded this off. You don't want any paint because that's not going to give you the, that ground, that connection that you need to the metal. And then, I think we need our washer. All right, now. As we said, it's time to rock and roll, you know what I'm saying? Put that back in. Whoops. No, it had a little slack, you know. That's good. Okay, so I had to go back and do something. I had to put the second fuse in right here. It goes right to the battery out of the 
the isolator. So the first one's before the isolator from the main battery. The second one right here. So the last thing I had to do is sand, finish sanding this. This is gonna be my ground point for the vehicle. So you want that uh, bare metal, right? So I forget what these bolts were originally for that we didn't need, but somebody had already threaded them right into the vehicle. And that's a, it's a pretty heavy duty bolt. But uh, it's gonna be perfect for the uh, ground. See how the wire fits right on it. So screw this in. Screw that back in. I don't have any more terminal connectors. So I'm just gonna do a real uh, temporary kind of fix until we can drive to the auto store. I'm just gonna wire this up. It's the negative anyway, it's just the ground. But uh, do our temporary fix. And then we'll do a permanent one when I get that terminal piece. Okay, well, I wasn't gonna do this right now. I was gonna go have lunch first. This might ruin my lunch. If this light right here doesn't come on, hopefully the car doesn't blow up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Wow, it started fast. Don't see that light coming on yet. It's a little bit alarming. Okay, is it this? One of our little gadgets here. Ah, oh, it came on! <laughs> Victory! Look, that means this battery is charging. That means we are over 13.3 volts coming from the battery that's under my butt. That's the vehicle battery. So that means even if we're just idling, sitting still, we don't have to be driving anywhere. This is on, which means it's charging this. So, if I turn the vehicle off, once the battery under my butt, the vehicle battery gets under, what is it, 12.8, 12.8 volts, 12 volt battery, so when it's not on, it's just sitting there, it goes down to 12 volts if it's fully charged. Uh, once it's down below 12.8, this light should turn off. So, I think we had a successful DIY. So all those frustrations, all those things you feel, all those times you want to give up, that makes it all worth it right there. Man, do I feel a sense of accomplishment. Especially when our refrigerator is able to run at night, when our vehicle's off and we're parked somewhere, when our fans can run at night, when our, uh, any appliances or any um, computers we have can charge at night. That's what this is all for. This makes camping so much easier. It brings it to the next level. Definite game changer. Highly suggest looking into it. Uh, if you're not comfortable putting it in yourself, I'm sure you can pay someone a few hundred pesos for that peace of mind. Again, this isn't pretty, right? You know, I have wires everywhere. My wife and my child are always in the back because my wife has to travel with my child in the back. So this is like my little playground up here. It doesn't have to be pretty, but I'll organize it better. That's because I wanted to have this all accessible. I don't want a fire breaking out, you know. It's our second fuse here, like I said. So I'm gonna know if something's wrong here while we're driving. I'm gonna know if something's wrong here or here. I have everything literally within my reach. And for me, that's a great sense of peace. And plus, having this crate here, it's a good armrest for me. I, I really love having it here. When we're doing the long drives, I like to have this. But. Uh, I like having it all accessible. It doesn't bother me at all to see the wires. And like I said, I'll be able to slide it right over here. We ever need to lift up the seat to get to the engine, okay? Okay, so that's already daunting enough, but then we have this pure sine wave inverter. <laughs> and this is a 3000 watt. So this will run just about anything. This, this converts the energy from the battery, the 12 volt battery, to 220 volt electricity that you can actually use. 